वेरी 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 गुड मॉर्निंग अगेन डिस्पाइट ऑल द सैड न्यूज कमिंग इन अबाउट कोविड स्प्रेडिंग डेथ्स टेकिंग प्लेस पीपल सफरिंग लाइफ स्टिल गोज ऑन एंड लाइफ बाउंसेस बैक व्हिच इज व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू बी डिस्कसिंग नेक्स्ट वीक बिकॉज़ आई एम डूइंग एन एक्सटेंसिव सर्वे विद पीपल फाइंडिंग आउट व्हाट मेथोडोलॉजी दे आर यूजिंग टू कीप देयर हेड्स अबव देयर द शोल्डर्स कीप their balance and keep their uh, peace of mind and things of that sort so i'm going to collate all that and present it to you next saturday when we are going to have the similar facebook live uh, meeting in which we are going to be discussing about how to bounce back first person experiences and all these type of uh, uh, things so a uh, happy mothers day to all you mothers all you mothers to be and all people like me who can never be mothers right long 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 back maybe 40 years uh, back one of the famous bollywood movies amitabh bachchan is telling his younger brother shashi kapoor who is a police sub inspector amitabh bachchan has become a don he has become a multi millionaire he has got all the wealth and power and status and everything and he is telling his younger brother mere paas gaadi hai bungla hai motor hai बैंक बैलेंस है तुम्हारे पास क्या है एंड यंगर ब्रदर शशि कपूर रिस्पॉन्स भाई मेरे पास माँ है वाओ एंड दैट डायलॉग इज कोटेड इवन फोर्टी इयर्स डाउन द लाइन मेरे पास माँ है ना हाउ डिड ऑल दिस थिंग कम अबाउट यू नो मोस्ट ऑफ अस डू नॉट रियलाइज द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ the media on us at least from the time when television and movies started getting more and more popular there has been a tremendous impact of what we see on the media see before that we had only the audio media that is the radio those things did not have the same effect because they say no that seeing is believing and they also say that 55% of your communication intake is visual so when you see something and we started seeing things when when television came in initially it was one or two channels and it didn't interest much but the moment we went into satellite tv and we got these dozens and dozens of channels people started getting glued to it you remember that people had even given that label called idiot box why because it is creating idiots couch potatoes they used to say people like potatoes sitting on the couch and staring away at the tv screen by the time one generation went past of mothers trying to wean their children away from tv children lost interest in tv because something better had come up which is the internet and the internet first came on the desktops then it came on to the laptops and finally it came down to the smartphones and you don't have to tell any child now don't watch tv because he's not interested in watching tv he has got his own world in that 6 inches of the mobile phone that he has so now let us talk about you know how these things have developed what is the concept today what we can do to improve matters and this and that of course with also the fact that with lockdowns and with covid and all that lifestyle changed significantly and what we can do uh, about it as i even mentioned in the blurb in india the woman has always been deified made into some sort of a devi as we call it devi mata was the concept we even call our country bharat mata for some reason we don't say bharat pita bharat is a masculine sounding name but we still uh, say bharat mata and only when we say bharat mata we feel that connectedness to our nation we feel that commitment that i want to do something because they say ke teri maa tujhe bula rahi hai all those patriotic songs you remember which used to say ke maa mein pukara hai chalo jawano aage badho so you those people would visualize that it is my mother who's 
you know, izzat is at stake. So I have to protect the honor of my mother. And that is why I am defending the nation, things like that. Right down to the real mothers at uh, home. We have always been taught in our culture, in our various religions and all that, that the mother is to be deified. The mother is to be looked upon as a Devi. Your moksha, your salvation, your jannat is at the feet of your mother. To that extent, we glorified the role of the mother. But at a practical level, what do you see when you look around? That same mother who is supposed to be a goddess, instead of relaxing in the temple where people come and keep feeding her and putting nice agarbattis for aroma and giving all sorts of offerings of sweets and garlands, that poor mother is half the time slogging away in the kitchen and half the time slogging away to take care of the uh, children and the husband's uh, personal uh, needs. So this is the dichotomy that I want to you know, discuss with you today. Let us start with the fact that you become a mother without either training or experience. I feel much more than that of a father. The role of a mother is so, so, so significant even today, even though we talk so much about gender neutrality and this and that, there is no doubt about it, particularly in the Indian way of life and Indian culture, that the mother's role for children is definitely very much more significant, very much uh, uh, more involved, intensive as compared to the role of the uh, father, as far as the basic parenting is concerned. Those of you who are familiar with my talks earlier know that I have always been propagating the concept that parenting is not a single word. Parenting is a combination of two, that is fathering and mothering. No father can replace the role of a mother and no mother can replace the role of a father. Yes, the father has a certain role, starting with, of course, being the provider and whatever it is. So he is the one who probably works and gets the income which uh, you know, puts the food on the uh, table. In many cases, not all. The second thing is that the father also acts as a sort of, uh, you know, what do you call it, uh, a authority figure that, you know, we have to obey father. He's the head of the family. Father will get angry and this and that. And here again, something very amazing that the mothers so often seem to abdicate their own authority and pass it on to the father. Let's say there's a child who is not behaving properly, who needs to be disciplined, who needs to be corrected. The mother makes a few attempts here and there, tries out a little bit of uh, this thing. If she succeeds, well and good, she is happy. She is now in control of the situation. But quite often it happens that she is not in control. The child becomes rebellious. The child is not listening. She is trying her level best. She is trying to be punishment. She is trying to coax and bribe. She is trying to threaten. Nothing happens. You know what is the ultimate tool that many mothers use? Okay, you are not listening to me. Wait till daddy comes. Then you will know what is what. Now daddy instead of being the loving, caring parent whom the child looks forward to, has been converted into a gabbar singh. Gabbar singh aega. These are some of the very subtle things which are happening all around us. And we are getting involved in these things without even realizing the damage that we are uh, uh, doing. Now, if you are making the father the gabbar singh, why do you expect Gabbar Singh to behave nicely even with you? When you have abdicated your responsibility and handed it over to the uh, father, it is very easy for him to get carried away and say that, okay, if I am that great Gabbar Singh and I can do whatever I want, I can throw my weight around, I can do anything with you also. No, This is what I want us to reflect over from time to uh, time. As I was mentioning to you, hardly any mother goes through any form of training or experience in becoming a mother. See, even one or two generations back when we were living with joint families, it was very easy. A growing child used to watch not only her mother, but probably her grandmother, her aunt, her 
sisters, her cousins, so many people having children, having babies, doing the parenting and this and that. So there used to be so many of them. And this little girl, while she is growing up, used to get a first-hand exposure and experience to what is mothering. Today, in nuclear families and things of that sort, a girl gets married. She starts living with her husband. Even if her in-laws are there, there is no you know, experience or exposure to how parenting or mothering takes uh, uh, place. And before you know it, she has been promoted. Now she has become a mother. Nature has made it in such a way that it takes eight, nine months before from the time of conception to the time you actually deliver a baby. What a wonderful time for you to learn the concepts of mothering, isn't it? But are we taught that? No. Even a girl who has to, let's say, give up her work because she is pregnant and she has certain issues because of which she can't do her work or something of that sort, she takes leave or she resigns her job or she becomes more of a full-time uh, homemaker or whatever uh, it is. She does have some spare time. Do we spend at least a portion of that uh, time helping her, training her how to become a better mother? At the most, what we are uh, taught about is that when the baby comes, how to feed the baby, how to keep the baby clean, what to do if the baby starts vomiting or pooping, what happens if you do these, that, all those physical aspects of mothering. But actually speaking, those are so simple, so easy, that even at the last moment, you can get answers. If you realize that the baby is you know, getting a tooth and because of that, the ba baby is getting indigestion or something of that sort, very easy answers available are to that. You don't even need to have prior training, anything of that sort. But the mental and emotional aspects of mothering are never taught. Even as a woman goes through pregnancy, let's say she has mood swings. People say, it's okay, it's okay, don't worry, it's very temporary, you know, once the pregnancy is over, it'll be fine. In the first uh, trimester, yeah, first trimester, no, first three months, it will be there, don't worry, everything will be uh, uh, fine. Right up to the time that, you know, the fears, the anxiety, and today the anxieties have increased because earlier, a would-be mother does never knew anything about the baby inside her womb till the actual delivery takes place. Today, we have so many checks and scans and this and that to find out is the child healthy. Every now and then a scare is given. The child is not moving. The child is not doing this. The child may have this problem or the child may have those issues or something of that uh, uh, sort. So the mind of the mother to be is again focused entirely on the physical aspects and not on the emotional and mental aspects right up to the time when the delivery takes place. Postpartum, so many women I know go through at least a brief period of what we refer to as postpartum blues. They suddenly seem to be feeling low after eight, nine months of struggle and anticipation and excitement and physical discomfort. After going through all that, everything is over and you have this little baby with you. And you feel, am I connected to this? Do I feel really happy the way I'm supposed to be feeling? I don't. And that becomes a major issue. If she says things like, you know, I am not happy with becoming a mother. Oh my God, all hell breaks loose. How can you even say that? You are a mother, you have to do this. And how can you not love your baby and things like that? Anyway, so that, uh, uh, you know, uh, goes on. Nothing is done. In extreme cases, we also have postpartum psychosis. Women who come down with psychotic ailments after their uh, delivery. So many of these things are neglected. Anyway, the baby is there and now the mother gets very busy looking after the physical needs of the uh, baby. And here again comes a very important uh, uh, thing. How much involvement of the father is there at this phase? Very often, the father may be absent. The girl may go away to her parents' place for the pregnancy and for the final delivery and 
the immediate days after the delivery the father has absolutely no control not even an exposure forget about you know actually experiencing it the father doesn't even see what his wife is going uh, through in that particular uh, phase i'm really happy with those people you know who agree to go and be there when the delivery is taking place if the husband is there with the wife holding her hand while the delivery is taking place whether it's a natural delivery whether it's cesarean it doesn't matter but just being there to go through that whole process of seeing how a delivery takes place bonds that person much better both with the newborn as well as with the mother i'm really happy that there are organizations who are you know also giving what we call as uh, paternity leave like how you have maternity leave expecting the pair and the father to spend some time with the baby and bond better with the baby i do hope that they actually use that time to bond with the baby and not just to sit at home with a paid holiday and enjoy and things of that sort but anyway the more the involvement of the father from the time of pregnancy to the time of delivery to the time when the baby is small helps to share the parenting part of it i wish every wife would be assertive enough to say that this is our baby this is our child both of us should be involved since i am taking the major part of the issue of you know physically getting pregnant going through the pregnancy and delivering the baby at the mental and emotional uh, uh, level i want the person i want you to be part of it if that is not done i have seen cases where the father just does not feel that commitment or that attachment and everything is left in the hands of the mother and then the mother has to start you know going through that whole process handling alone maybe if her mother comes and helps out and things of that sort it is fine but even that is for a short while how long can the grandmother take care of the uh, little one and as i said again the grandmother may take care of the physical needs what about the emotional aspects what about the bonding what about making the child understand certain basics of development of emotions and relationships and all these type of things that is left entirely to the mother all of you are aware that from the time we started talking about life skills multiple intelligences and emotional intelligence one fact that has come out quite significantly is that in general whether it is genetic whether it is because of training don't ask me but the fact remains that in general women seem to have a much better developed and much sharper eq emotional quotient dealing with different aspects of emotions being aware of emotions managing emotions motivating oneself empathizing with others social skills all this generally is stronger in uh, uh, women and that is why the woman makes a far better you know parent in many ways of the social and emotional development of the child in many other areas the father may be playing an equal role maybe sometimes even a better role but as far as the social and emotional development uh, is concerned it is the mother who is well equipped to do it and the mother in most cases also have the time and inclination to uh, do it now what happens many mothers unfortunately what they could not really bond with their husband what they could not really get from their husbands in terms of this emotional connect and these sort of uh, things for various uh, reasons they start looking for that in the child that is a very sad thing to do your child can never be a substitute for your husband please remember all you mothers do not look for that emotional fulfillment that bonding that relationship with a child which you may feel a little lacking with your uh, husband and more so if it happens to be a son there are amazing things where so many mothers have pampered their sons so much that the son starts becoming a little bit of a monster overtaking his father 
he starts becoming more rebellious he starts becoming more self centered and those sort of uh, uh, things day in and day out we deal with such situations and such uh, people such families and unfortunately we deal with it when things go to much beyond control when people find that you know they have pampered a son for example so much that today the son is overtaken the father in terms of his behavior arrogance or whatever you want to uh, call it now these are some of the things which i think we need to be very very conscious of and work on it from right from the uh, you know beginning May, very often i have also seen mothers protecting the behavior bad behavior of their children please do not do that they start off by protecting from the fathers the child tells the mother don't tell daddy that this 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 i did and all that and the mother becomes a conspirator and says okay i will not tell because i know how uh, you know short tempered is daddy is and he will unnecessarily get very angry and upset and scold him or maybe even slap him so i'm going to protect him i think that's a big crime that a mother is doing with regard to her uh, child if he has done something bad let him learn to face it otherwise tomorrow as an adult he will always look at shortcuts how to get away by you know committing a crime and not getting uh, caught the same thing mothers uh, do with regard to their relatives their friends their whoever uh, it is do not protect your child if your child is doing something wrong yes you can minimize it and say that yes he is a growing child or she is uh, you know still to get that maturity so she does certain things that's okay that doesn't really uh, matter you don't have to condemn the child but do not tell lies go into the extent of protecting and you know telling lies about the child that is where the mother is contributing towards creating a monster out of a uh, child i also know of uh, uh, you know working mothers who feel guilty i really don't understand why it is okay if you have decided that i am going to be a working mother i want to have an identity i want to have a earning or something of the sort it is not the quantity time that you spend with your child it is the quality time so after having put in your you know hard days work whatever it is whether you are working from home or from outdoors or whatever it is if you can still get back to your family get back to your child and interact with your child and give quality time and attention and affection to your child i see no reason why you should feel guilty the other thing that i have noticed which is a deep concern to me is mothers who start feeling helpless like i told you that my child is not listening to me so i am threatening him let father come back that should not be the case there is no question of your feeling helpless that has been somewhere you know drilled into the women and the mother the great indian woman somehow has been told that you have limitations you cannot do this you cannot do that just to give an example i know of so many women even well educated women who are capable of doing so many things they say money matters i cannot handle only my husband knows even if she is earning very well she is working hard she is so competent that she is in a responsible position she gets a pretty decent salary but when that salary comes in she tells her husband you decide how to invest and what to do with this money she sort of abdicates that thing saying that i don't know the beauty of it is i have seen the same women if they lose their husband either to death or divorce or whatever it may be suddenly become financial wizards overnight they start handling all the finances and they do a wonderful job of it think what was the cause the cause was that you took up that tina syndrome there is no alternative i can't handle this i can't do that this is a sincere request of mine to all mothers with growing children do not abdicate your abilities do not you know push yourself down by saying i am very poor in money matters you know so i only tell my husband to do 
do this. Not only your own you know, self-image and your uh, self-esteem goes down, people also start looking down at you. People think that you are not capable. Then don't blame people for you know, taking it so easy with you, not giving you any significance. And then you get upset and you cry over it that nobody cares. I do so much for my family and nobody seems to appreciate it. Because in today's commercial world, you have to sell yourself. If instead of selling, a shopkeeper starts hiding his products, if he puts uh, you know, curtains around his products and doesn't even display them, do you think people will buy? No, no. He not only exposes those products, he actually puts some maybe you know spotlights on uh, them, maybe creates a very nice showroom or something of that sort so that people can see and then only they buy. That is what uh, you know happens. The other area of my uh, concern is with mothers who do not learn how to let go. They must learn from eagles. You know what the eagle does? The eagle lays eggs on a high place, on a cliff, makes a nest just on that ledge. The eggs are laid, then the eggs hatch, then the eaglets come out. The mother starts feeding the eaglets for a few days. One fine day, the mother looks at the eaglet and says, yes, now is the time. And you know what she does? She kicks that eaglet out of the nest 500 feet, 1000 feet above ground level. And that eaglet, little fellow, is out in the open. And he is falling. And instinctively, he spreads out his wings and starts flying. We have to learn that lesson. And this is more so with mothers than with fathers. You have to learn to let go. The empty nest is just around the corner. These are some of the things which I thought I would like to share with you. I would like to just take a quick little uh, break and get back uh, to you. but. In the second half, as usual, more than just a few points, which I may add on if we have the time. But more than that, I would like to have your questions, your comments, your suggestions, your doubts. So let us spend as much as possible of the second half in having an open uh, discussion. So right now, I am requesting Sonal to just take over for just a minute and I will be back. Yes, Sally, go have your chai and come. Right, so. Hey, Sonal, yes. Okay. So, like Ali was telling you about the eagle, we have a lot of calls from eagles telling us that, you know, suddenly a lady will call and say, I'm really old. I don't know what to do with myself. I have two teenagers. You know, the way she talks, I, I would get an impression that it's, you know, a really, really old lady, <laughs> you know, who's talking to me. Of course, I don't ask what's your age. That's not a nice thing to do. And in that conversation, they are like, you know, I'm already 46. I am 43. And I'm like, hello, <laughs> where are you old? I mean, there is so much that you can do. So in Banjara, you know, our as counselors, we love to, uh, you know, have a very honest uh, conversation with people. We call them, I mean, one on one, uh, you know, counseling session. Counseling is, you know, what just just letting the person went out, telling us what they want, their aspirations. Somewhere down the line, they have kind of, you know, uh, done, you know, sacrifice for other people, other members of the family. But yeah, now you're in eagle, you're eagle. It's are ready to uh, fly off and you have all the time in the world to work on yourself. So we love to work on uh, people, give them that little support and guidance, a little push and the true potential of the ma comes out, you know, in several forms. Uh, so if you uh, are, uh, you know, a sort of a person or you know of somebody who uh, wants to just, uh, you know, start the second innings, please get in touch with us. 
you know that in banjara you know counseling is absolutely free all you need is you know come and have a chat and uh, spend some time with us and i am guaranteeing you that you will feel wonderful about yourself <laughs> right so and also another thing that uh, you know uh, uh, we work on is ups upskilling uh, you know people so we have a lot of programs which uh, always talk about uh, you know you know uh, i mean we focus on upskilling and one of them which is coming up now is our ccad program okay child certificate in child and adolescent development so this is for mothers or fathers or any significant adult a teacher who wants to understand uh, children right the especially now during the lockdown children are going through a lot adolescents are going through a lot and uh, especially in terms of their uh, emotional needs their social needs you know that is something that we definitely are concerned about so how can you as a as an adult help out children around you so this is one program coming up on uh, 15th uh, the details are here and what we are doing today is uh, in the afternoon 3:30 to 5 o'clock we are going to be talking about that program right we will be telling you how we will be doing the classroom on a saturday how it will be backed up by a mentoring session so if you want to know more about the program you know the whole team is going to be there dr ali punni sonal uh, you know all of us will be there to help you to understand this program it's a four month online program so uh, uh, most welcome i'll put down uh, the two numbers also where you can uh, text us and uh, we will send you the link so please join us to understand what we are talking about when we say that uh, you know as adults how we can make a you know difference or guide uh, our children better and lot of uh, topics are covered in them including parenting styles so you'll get a very scientific or a very psychological understanding on uh, you know uh, parenting so that is something we are coming up with so uh, please get in touch with us and we would love to meet you in the uh, afternoon at 3:30 we'll do a g suite so we'll send you the link come and join us right so ali over to you thank you sima one very significant point which sima just uh, spoke about is upskilling the role of a mother requires upskilling on a continuous basis because children are changing at a very fast rate the children of 20 years back are definitely not the same as children of 10 years back the children of even 5 years back the concept of children and what they you know have the way they behave the way they think the way they emote is constantly changing now if i want to be an effective parent i have to keep upskilling myself I was just remembering, we had this student who came from a very rural and a very vernacular background. She learned English very late in her life. She had a son who used to call her mummy. One fine day, she called her son and said, "From today, don't call me mummy. Call me amma." The son said, "Okay, but why?" She said, "I saw one English movie called The Mummy." and i realized that mummies are dead people i am still alive so you have to call me amma now isn't that that is what i mean by saying that small small ways different ways how you can you know help to understand and one of the important things in the, that is as your children grow up please learn to take their views or their opinions very often they have something meaningful to uh, tell you Sureka says mothers manipulate adult children through guilt how does the married son handle this passive uh, uh, tyranny uh, i would like to have if they are interested a separate session for the married sons and the married fathers and even the unmarried fathers of course uh, to deal with see the gender factors i told you fathering and mothering are two completely different uh, concepts so today i'm not touching upon what we need to what the man needs to do whether it's a son or the husband or the father or whatever um, uh, it is what i am focusing on today is as i said you know the dichotomy of on the one side 
deifying mothers and making them into devi maas and on the other side making them feel so helpless and so miserable that she comes down to that typical bollywood thing of kya karu ma hu na as though you know she is just so desperate she can't do anything she has to wear that white sari as a widow and keep doing phu phu to that wooden uh, stove or become a construction worker or something of that uh, so atvita says as a mom i too feel uh, we are very powerful and play a very uh, key role in shaping our children we can make them strong and show them the right path and or make them monsters best way to do it by, by uh, uh, yourself yes children do observe every time i agree with you vinta and that is what we need to be doing so i want every mother regardless of what age your children are it doesn't matter even if your children have grown up you still a mother you will continue to be a mother to them so certain small areas where you can keep you know giving them certain guidance giving them certain inputs as a mother please continue to do that shobha says this really i hope not to have special skill in money matters today i realize thank you though i thought it's a great that i have no no shobha i'm glad that you have woken up uh, to it just because you know you have a man in the house that does not mean and that in, it is not just restricted to the money uh, matters it also makes a person feel and the other people feel that you are no good mummy doesn't even know how to operate a bank account mummy doesn't know anything about these interest rates and these and the mis and all that so they in general tend to look down upon mummy it's not just the money matters and the other says letting go and feeling confident of loving our children is so hard how does one deal with it start early anuradha firstly if you have small children start from that age mentally prepare yourself and say one fine day this child is going to fly out of the nest now if your children are already grown up they've already come to teenage it's never too late start a simple thing like visualizing what life will be minus your child feel that thing that you know even if your child has one year two years three years to fly out of the nest start visualizing it more than anything else and according to the visualization start changing your regular habits start picking up small skills start picking up hobbies all those type of uh, things uh, nagratna says how do i adapt to the role of a mother in law from a mother that's another very fantastic thing the indian mother who is so sacrificial and so much of a devi and this and that brings up her uh, son gives 110% attention to the son and literally sacrifices her whole life for the son finally makes the son grow up selects a bride in many cases it is still the parents who are selecting brides for for their uh, son and gets him married and suddenly she seems to become a monster mother in law that is something which I, again you know is so so intriguing and you ask the daughter of that same lady and she will say my mother is the best mother in the whole world you ask the daughter in law and she will say that my mother in law is a monster which is true neither of them it is just how you have not adapted yourself to the roles and even now even let's say you have a grown up son you have become a mother in law it's definitely not too late at some point you know call a truce like two warring countries say okay we will have a cease fire and now we'll sit down and talk let's draw a line to say which is the line of actual control what do you control and what do i control it's not that difficult countries find it difficult because of their egos if you let go of your ego and say this is what we will do this is what we will not uh, do Mansa says husband's profession is very hectic, but manages to pitch in to help here and there. Congratulate your husband and give him a wonderful hug, Mansa. He deserves uh, that. Start at home. Wife feels guilty to ask for more help, but feels burnout managing all household chores and child care. How to deal with the uh, uh, thing? You have to overcome your guilt. Start off with first overcoming your. Uh, Uh, guilt. In fact, right now I am in the process of writing a workbook on overcoming guilt. It should be ready in the next couple of uh, weeks. We will be put, uh, announcing it as soon as it is ready. You can take a copy of that and start working on overcoming the uh, guilt. And once you overcome the guilt, the burnout and the this and that automatically can be managed. 
Sureka says if the child, uh, adult child is a bully, how does the mother assertively communicate that she will no longer allow it? The trick lies in not going into a conflict and not going into some sort of a war with the adult child, but to slowly start tightening the screw. Slight variations. And remember that an assertive person does achieves a lot just by non-verbal communication, just by small, small gestures. So here is this bully son who's raising his voice and saying a lot of things. If the mother can consciously come in front of him and look at him like this, with no expression, no words, and quietly turn around and go away into the kitchen or into the drawing room or whatever uh, it is, the message starts reading, reaching. He may even react. Why are you staring at me? What happened? What happened? Nothing happened. Let go. He starts feeling uneasy. These are very simple but effective means of becoming assertive with uh, an adult, you know. With children, of course, it's far easier. They are, they are under your control. But when the person has become an adult, this uh, techniques of uh, becoming more and more assertive, pointing out things, not by complaining and telling you are bad, you did this, but by talking about I felt bad. I was hurt. I felt very confused. I felt very disappointed when this, this, this happened. Learn to express your emotions. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes patience, but it works. Dr. Smith says making our children independent is great, but when they start taking decisions about their life, it hurts. Why should it hurt, uh, Smith? Let them take decisions about their life. Sometimes decisions which you consider are wrong. Even that I feel are decisions through which that child will learn certain lessons of life. Your child, when he was a toddler, had to get up, try to walk, stumble, fall down, and again get up and walk. Look at it in the same manner. That my child is grown up now and is going to take decisions. Some of those decisions are going to be wrong according to me. Remember that also. I may not always know which is good for him. There are times when he wants to take wrong decisions because that's what he wants out of uh, uh, life. If you leave that and what you can do is after he has taken that decision, in the worst case, it backfires. You know, he is struck down. He faces a setback. Don't scold. Don't say I told you or something. After things have cooled down, one day sit down with that child and discuss. I was just reviewing this decision that you had taken to do this, this, this. Apparently, it doesn't seem to have had very good results. So I was concerned about uh, you. I was wondering how we can we can avoid these sort of situations in future. Become a team along with him instead of scolding him and telling him where he was uh, uh, wrong. Meta says, uh, one more thing uh, I feel. Talking to children, no matter what age they are, we need to respect them and be like friends to them, it's a lot more easy. Yes, Vinita, I agree with uh, uh, you. I would even extend to say, don't talk to them, listen to them. Just stimulate their mind and make them think about you know, certain um, things and let them come out with their own emotions, whatever they uh, feel. It is amazing how much as we grow older and older, how much we can learn from the younger generation if we are open uh, to it. I am learning continuously from the younger generation. And by allowing the younger generation that freedom, that uh, choices of making decisions, even if the decision goes uh, wrong, helps me, relieves me of a lot of responsibilities. And it gives me the reassurance that while I'm around, let the children learn by making mistakes. Tomorrow when they are independent and then they have to face life, they can do a better job of it. Navina says, I'm proud of my 12-year-old son who is vocal of his emotions. Congratulations. But I'm struggling with teaching him boundaries. Some incident happened and I thought I'd teach him boundaries and learn to respect 
no from a person yes it takes time it takes effort okay now as you said he expresses his emotions right so what you do is one day when he does something wrong like this where he has crossed his boundaries and it has affected or it has hurt somebody else what you do is to you discuss with him and tell him how did you feel when this happened and more than that how did you feel when i scolded you or prevented you from doing that when he comes out with his emotions you respond only to his emotions not to the actions if you can help him to manage his emotions you know that all actions are based on our emotions right so all you need to do is to help him to get a better understanding awareness and management of his own uh, emotions yes renuka says teenagers in this lockdown just spend their entire free time with gadgets any suggestions to use their time productively doesn't work no renuka you're giving up too easily i feel when you say that it doesn't work what i want you to do is to use this skill called empathy put yourself in the shoes of today's teenager the way they think and the way they emote and what are their priorities in uh, uh, life what makes the teenager respond positively to a suggestion and what makes him respond negatively what makes life exciting for the teenager which are the ways and means of going on exploring and finding activities which are non screen based we are as a team here in banjara continuously working on that and what uh, sima was telling you know about that ccad program which we are starting uh, very soon a lot of that in that we are going to be continuously discussing and reviewing and analyzing how children can be weaned off from technology and how they can be made to do a lot of fun activities which they think are games and enjoyable things but which are actually teaching them basic life skills farida uh, says many people find it difficult to give freedom from religion to their children they feel the child has no choice in this matter yes it's a very sensitive matter uh, farida but you i would only say go by your conscience conscience is more important than any religion or communities or rituals or anything of that sort if you are answerable to your conscience and if you can teach your child to be you know answerable to his or her conscience i think you have succeeded in your uh, uh, job these are the type of uh, uh, you know things that we need to work on coming back to renuka's thing about you know spending uh, they spend all their free time with the uh, gadgets we need to ask ourselves what are the alternatives and options that we are giving see the children were not responsible for this lockdown we the adults were responsible that this lockdown has uh, uh, come on them when we are imposing a lockdown on the child it is our duty to go on continuously exploring and finding out what are the ways and means by which we can help them to find something exciting something challenging something interesting which they would like to do which takes them slowly weans them away from technology and from screens and all that and in the end it gives them certain sense of fulfillment and it becomes a chain reaction once they start doing it one leads to another one leads to another and that is how the thing uh, uh, goes so i would like all of you particularly those of you who are ma hu na kya karu the kya karu has a hundred different answers as long as you do not surrender your rights that is what concerns me so many competent indian women well educated they have had a good upbringing they have had good parenting they are very cultured they have everything going but for some reason their self esteem is low and they feel they are incompetent they don't even make the efforts that are required to see whether they can actually do it or not like i mentioned about money matters in so many other areas i have seen this uh, happening a family has a vehicle only the father uses the vehicle the mother said no i am not very confident of riding the bike or driving the uh, car so you know and i will tell daddy only to do this 
yes, it's okay if daddy also has to do things, you must involve daddy. But you should not come to a stage where you say, I can't drive or I can't ride. I know of women and mothers who are actually doing things like uh, uh, that. Now, who told you that only men can drive cars or ride bikes or whatever uh, it is? Who told you that you have something lacking in you, you are handicapped and you will never be able to learn? Yeah, actually what happened was a few years back I wanted to learn and uh, you know my uh, elder uh, brother-in-law had a car and I took it and I banged it against the garage uh, wall from that time I stopped driving. Who hasn't banged a car when you started learning to drive? Nothing wrong uh, with it. And just because of that, you cannot abdicate your responsibility and you do it in one area, you will realize that you are doing it in all the areas. Overall, your confidence and self-esteem goes down. And that is where you land up with the title of today's uh, webinar. That is, Kya karu? Ma hu na. That is something that I want you to do. And at the same time, the reverse of that also. Have you not seen those uh, uh, no, Indian movies where the mother, uh, the father is murdered by some goons and this lady has a small child and she starts training that little fellow to grow up and take revenge. What an amazing thought. Huh? I will train this guy for 20 years not to become a good citizen, not to become competent, not to learn life skills, not to earn good money, but to take revenge on those people who killed her. If you want to take revenge, why don't you learn how to, you know, shoot a revolver or rifle or something of that sort and go and shoot and be the end of it. Why do you want to teach your child to do that? There are innumerable such movies and certain serials and all that where the mother goes on and on. You remember that Mere Karan Arjun Aenge. Mere Karan Arjun Aenge. She has become the mad woman. She is roaming around all over the village. But she is going on saying, Mere Karan Arjun Aenge. As I said, why can't she learn how to uh, you know, hold a knife and go and stab that fellow and be finished and done with? That is the thing which I uh, you know, keep focusing on and keep reminding people. Do not use your children for anything. This is an extreme case of course, murder and all that. But even small, small things sometimes of saying that, you know, I will train my child to do this, this, this. No, please don't do that. Your child is not, as Khalil Gibran very rightly said, your children are through you, but not of you. They don't belong to you. Remember that they're just transiting through you and they will be flying off in no time. Navina says, I think we as mothers should realize our importance, value ourselves and convey the same through our actions and words, of course. This will help to add to what, you know, that uh, self-esteem, confidence, so many such uh, uh, things. Farida says, I'm grateful to my son who encouraged me to learn many new things, including riding a scooter at 43. So you see, Seema, here is a person who is not shy of telling her age and yet, you know, very happy saying that I am 43 and my life is just beginning and stuff like uh, uh, that. I'll uh, share a real life example with you. There's this friend of mine whom I uh, visited long back, uh, of course, pre-COVID days. So when you say things like I visited and all that, uh, you know, it holds no meaning right now. Anyway, on a holiday, I was visiting this friend of uh, 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 mine. Oh, fantastic. Farida is now clarifying that she is 54 and not... Uh, 43. So we will review again when you are 65. Uh, uh, the, let's see what new things you learn from now till you are 65 years of uh, age. So I went to this person and this person's wife got hold of me and said, Bhai sahab, you are a counselor. Please counsel my daughter. She is so irresponsible. She is not studying. She has come to PUC, but still, you know, she doesn't take responsibility. All that she started saying. And she told her, uh, she called out to her daughter. On a Sunday morning, the daughter is enjoying her holiday and she is pulled out by her mother to you know, sit and talk to some cranky old uncle or whatever I am supposed to uh, be. Anyway, in front of the daughter, you know what the mother told me? See, she is our only daughter. We are willing to do anything for her. We are willing to spend any amount of money. We are willing to send her to America to uh, study. We are willing to do everything. 
but she's so irresponsible. She doesn't study. She's so intelligent, but she's so lazy. She doesn't even prepare before the exams and things like that. And you know, sir, I was also intelligent when I was her age. And I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to achieve so much in life. But you know, I came from a very conservative family. They didn't allow me to study. They said, uh, you know, uh, girls should not take up science or um, MBBS and this and that. Somehow I finished some, you know, BA degree and they got me married off. And today I'm 38 years of age and my life is over. I have nothing to look forward to except the future of my child. That's why I'm investing all my energy into her. I don't care. Now I have no aspirations left in life. Whatever life has offered to me, I'm not thankless. I'm thankful to God that God has given me a good family, a good husband, a good child and all that. So I will just spend my life, whatever the rest of my life is away. But you please tell her how to make a good life. Right. Anyway, I spoke five minutes to the child. I know that she wasn't listening to me. And then I told her to go. She ran away happily. But after the child left, I told the mother, you know what sort of a role model you are. You know what is the message that you are giving to the child? You are saying I'm 38 and my life is over and nothing is there to look forward to. And I'm so bored and I'm so this and that. Now, this 17 year old is looking at her mother and saying, by the time I'm 38, if this is what life is going to be, at least now let me enjoy life. That is the message that you have given to your daughter. If on the other hand, the same mother had said, I am 38. I have brought up my one and only daughter. If she goes off to America or goes for higher studies, I am going to upgrade myself. I am going to learn new skills. I am going to take up some activities. I am going to give a different direction and meaning to my life. I'm only 38 years old. I've got a long way to go. That would be the inspiration to the child. I can never underestimate the power of being a good role model. And unfortunately, many mothers are very poor role models to their children. When we ask, uh, you know, children, who are your role models? So many of them talk about their fathers and grandfathers. Very few talk about their mothers because they take it for granted that my mother is like, you know, that domestic help or somebody around who's just there to take care of us and the family and all that. She doesn't have anything great that I can look up to and admire and emulate. Now, if you cannot do that with your own child, what have you achieved as a mother just by feeding, looking after the nutrition, looking after the safety and security that anybody could have done now. The greatest thing that a mother can give to a child is that feeling of motivation, inspiration, being a good role model, being able to show that, see, this is what I have done. I have brought you up to this point. I have given you the best of what I could give you. And now, I am going to kick you out of the nest and you are not only going to fly, you are going to soar into the heavens. Look forward to that day. Develop that in your uh, children. And at the end of it, you can look back and say that, yes, I have achieved something as a mother. You can actually say, instead of saying, kya karo? Maine kya kiya? Ma huna. Maine bohat kuch kiya hai. I have done a lot. And I can now rest on my laurels and start a second innings where I am not bound down by my children. And I will do whatever I want. And I am going to enjoy the rest of my life. Best of luck.